Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Overwatch in 2024. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So the first one is display mode. Make sure that you're playing full screen. Don't use window or borderless. It will cause you some stuttering sometimes. It's a bit weird. Uh, target display. Just use the one that you want to use. Resolution. I'm playing native. Super important. By default, mine was at 60 Hz. Make sure that you're using the native um, amount of Hz of your monitor. In my case, it's 240. So choose 240. Super important, this setting. Field of view, I always play at maximum, but you need to remember that uh, an higher FOV, you will lose FPS. So if you're struggling with your FPS, maybe start at 90. Do the old guide, look at your FPS. If everything is fine, you can go higher definitely. Aspect ratio, I recommend to go with your native. So in my case, it's 16 by 9. Dynamic render scale, you don't you want to uh, remove that. So you don't want um, the render scale adapt depending on your FPS. DLSS, if you have an RTX card, I really recommend to using it if you're struggling with your FPS. Just use the quality mode, honestly, because balanced performance and ultra performance, everything is a little bit too blurry for me. Quality, you will gain a nice 10% boost in your FPS. Also, I want to show you something, the DLSS swapper like this. So use the latest version of DLSS for Overwatch 2. So use the 3.7. It's pretty easy. You select a game, you click on it, you click swap, and now you have the latest version of DLSS. So do that for Overwatch. Your image will be a little bit better than the 3.5. You can see some uh, documentation on the web, like what is the difference between both. And uh, that's pretty much it. So frame rate after that, just uh, you have... Two or three options. The first one is unlock everything. You want the less input lag. So this is pretty much what I'm currently doing. I know some people like to play with FreeSync and G-Sync. For example, with FreeSync, make sure that you uh, have like two uh, FPS less than your maximum Hertz. So for example, your monitor is 170 Hertz. Put your uh, max frame rate at 168. So you want to make sure that you're always in your free sync range. And I know some people play with V-Sync on. Uh, you will remove uh, the tiering line, but you will add input lag. And it, honestly, it's kind of important at Overwatch. Well, I'm not a big fan of that. So just uh, unlock your FPS. V-Sync off, triple buffering off, reduce buffering off. NVIDIA Reflect, if it's available for you, go with Enable. After that, for the graphic quality, so upsampling, like uh, we said, the DLSS is pretty good. Uh, FSR, if you have a Radiant car, honestly, 2.2 is not that bad. It's not like on par with DLSS, but it's not that bad. I remember back in the days, they just have FSR like 1.0, and this one is pretty crap, so don't use it. So if you're struggling with your FPS, 2.2 can help you. You will have a nice 8% boost in your FPS. But uh, honestly, it's a lot. It's it's good for people who's playing 4K, even maybe uh, 1440p. At 1080p, honestly, it's kind of rough. And Overwatch is well optimized, so don't use an upscaling. Just go at default and change your setting because default, uh, your image quality will be better than those upscaling over there. After that, for texture quality and texture filtering, I recommend to go I and Epic if you have like six gig and more of VRAM. 4 gig go with something like 8x at medium and 
if you have 3 gig of VRAM, go to X low and uh, you should be fine. Even 2 gig uh, of VRAM, maybe just go low on X for your filtering quality. But uh, majority of the people can play I and Epic, honestly. Local fog quality, I recommend to go low over there. A nice 6% boost in your FPS. Dynamic reflection, go with off. This one will uh, stabilize your FPS a lot. You will not have like crazy drop when you see reflection and stuff like that. Shadow detail, some folks like to play medium because you're seeing a little bit better the shadow uh, on the floor so you can see enemy with that. This one is kind of huge. If you compare ultra to up, you can have an improvement of 20% in your FPS. So it really depends where you are in the guide. Maybe start at medium if you're struggling, uh, stay, uh, go with low or even removing it. Model detail, you can go with medium easily. 1% difference between low and medium. But after that, uh, I and ultra, you will lose 2-3% to for each bracket. So my recommendation is go with medium. Effect quality, go with low. Again, you're going to stabilize a lot your FPS and you will gain a nice 4%. Lighting at low, you're going to gain 5%. So again, go with low. All those parameters are for like very good visibility and also to optimize your FPS. Anti-aliasing, if you're using FSR or DLSS normally, it will not apply. But if you don't, I recommend FXAA, a basic anti-aliasing. It will do the job and your game will not be blurry. I'm not a huge fan of SMAA. Honestly, the game looks very blurry. And I know some folks like to play with uh, anti-aliasing at off. So definitely, it can also be an option. Refraction quality, you can go with medium easily. Uh, screenshot quality is just for your screenshot. Ambient inclusion, definitely go off. Your game will look very flat, but you're going to optimize like 9% of your FPS. And also, your vi visibility will be a lot better. Local reflection at off. And the last one, damage, uh, damage sorry, FX stay at default. For detail over there, if you want to see your VRAM, because you're not sure uh, like how many VRAM the game consume, your temperature and stuff like that, you can activate everything here at on. You can use also other software like MS Afterburner or just the FPS meter from Steam. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Overwatch guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.